Welcome to another episode of the Dirty Money Diaries, the podcast where we delve into the world of law enforcement strategies and efforts to combat criminal activities. I'm your host, Naomi Thompson, a retired detective with over 30 years of law enforcement experience. And today we have an eye-opening episode that dives into the real-life impact of asset forfeiture at the local level. Asset forfeiture isn't just a term tossed around in legal circles. It's a powerful tool that law enforcement agencies use to take down criminal networks, improve safety, and uplift communities. Today, our guest speaker is Nia William, a remarkable community leader who has dedicated her life to making a difference in her neighborhood. Nia, please share with us your story and how you became a community leader. Thank you, Naomi. It's truly an honor to be here and share with your audience the incredible collaborative efforts we've undertaken over the years. My path to becoming a community leader traces back to my early years. I was raised in a neighborhood that confronted a myriad of challenges, crime, drugs, and a dearth of opportunities. But instead of resigning to the status quo, I made a conscious choice to take action. I initiated my journey by volunteering with local organizations dedicating my efforts to establishing secure havens for children and extending support to families facing hardships. That's genuinely inspiring, Nia. Your journey into collaborating with government leaders and initiatives like Weed and Seed must have been quite a transformative experience. Can you share more details about how you got involved and the impact it's had on your community? Absolutely. As I continued my community work, I realized the importance of partnerships with government leaders to affect real change. This led me to engage with the Weed and Seed Program, a government initiative aimed at weeding out crime and seeding in community development. Through this collaboration, we harness the power of asset forfeiture in a more systematic way. By seizing assets from criminal activities, we could funnel resources into our community's most pressing needs. Could you share a particular story that highlights the tangible benefits of asset forfeiture, especially within the context of the Weed and Seed program? Certainly, there was a notorious criminal enterprise operating out of the hotel in our city, involving drug trafficking, money laundering, and violence. Through collaborative efforts between law enforcement and government leaders, they managed to seize the hotel, a symbol of criminal activity. This was a significant win for our community, and it highlighted the power of asset forfeiture to take down criminal strongholds. That's a compelling example, Nia. Could you share how the seizure of the hotel impacted your community? The seizure of the hotel marked a pivotal moment for our community. It not only disrupted a long-standing criminal operation that had plagued our neighborhood for years, but we also transformed the hotel into a sanctuary for women in need. The assets seized from the hotel were reinvested directly into our community. We utilized those resources to breathe new life into our neighborhood, converting the hotel into a safe and welcoming women's shelter. This act demonstrated that asset forfeiture isn't solely about taking something away. It's about returning something invaluable, hope and opportunities to those who need it most. Your work is truly inspiring, Nia. What message would you like to leave with our listeners about the importance of asset forfeiture and government community collaborations in building safer, more vibrant communities? My message is this. Change is possible when communities, government leaders, and law enforcement agencies come together with a shared vision. Asset forfeiture isn't just about taking away from criminals. It's about giving back to the community. Programs like Weed and Seed offer a framework for structured change, allowing us to create safe, thriving neighborhoods where everyone can flourish. Thank you, Nia, for sharing your remarkable journey and insights. Your work is a shining example of how dedicated individuals, working hand-in-hand -hand with government leaders, can make a lasting impact on their communities. But asset forfeiture isn't confined to street crime. It extends its reach into the realm of white-collar crime. Picture this, a prominent community member orchestrating an intricate financial fraud scheme. Authorities uncovered the plot and took decisive action, seizing assets ranging from bank accounts to luxury items bought with stolen funds. Not only did this offer restitution to victims, 
but it also served as a stark reminder that no one is above the law. This story showcases how asset forfeiture safeguards both financial integrity and community trust. Organized retail crime might sound like something from a movie, but it's a real issue that communities face. Criminal groups engage in large-scale theft and distribution of stolen goods. Local law enforcement agencies are partnering with retailers to combat this menace. Through asset forfeiture, these agencies are not just intercepting stolen merchandise, but also putting a dent in these criminal networks' operations. This collaboration between law enforcement and businesses ensures safer streets and protected businesses. Asset forfeiture isn't just about punishment, it's also about empowerment. Communities benefit from the funds seized from criminal activities. Law enforcement agencies are redirecting these funds towards vital community-based initiatives. From youth mentoring programs to drug rehabilitation efforts, these initiatives address the root causes of crime. It's a remarkable way of turning ill-gotten gains into positive change. As we wrap up today's episode, the key takeaway is clear. Asset forfeiture isn't just about confiscating assets, it's about reclaiming communities. Through real-life stories of drug busts, gang activity suppression, white-collar crime investigations, organized retail crime prevention, and community-based initiatives, we've seen the transformative power of this tool. Asset forfeiture is more than legal jargon. It's a beacon of hope for safer neighborhoods, stronger bonds, and brighter futures. By seizing and redirecting assets tied to criminal activity, local law enforcement agencies continue to be champions of justice and catalysts for change. We deeply appreciate your company on this journey through the intricate and sometimes controversial world of asset forfeiture. Our hope is that this episode has piqued your curiosity and encouraged you to engage critically with this vital subject. We warmly invite you to join the ongoing conversation by sharing your questions and thoughts in the comments section below. Your active participation fuels meaningful dialogue, and we're committed to addressing each inquiry to the best of our knowledge. If you found this episode to be a valuable resource, we encourage you to amplify knowledge by sharing it with your friends and family. Also, please take a moment to show your support by liking this podcast and subscribing for more thought-provoking content. Your involvement truly has a tangible impact. Once again, our heartfelt gratitude for tuning in. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay tuned for forthcoming eye-opening episodes of The Dirty Money Diaries. Acknowledgement. We want to acknowledge the role of artificial intelligence, AI, and voice synthesis technology in producing this podcast episode. The dialogue and voices you've heard were generated with the assistance of AI. While AI plays a role in the production process, it's crucial to emphasize that human professionals provided expertise and guidance to shape the final content and ensure its accuracy. We believe that AI can be a valuable tool for creating educational content, but we also believe in transparency regarding its role in our production process.